today we are going to talk about getting involved during your first year at UNLV. Um, so to kind of start off, Isabel, could you kind of introduce yourself? Let us know kind of like where you are in your um, college journey. Yes, absolutely. So hi, everyone. My name is Isabel. I use she, her pronouns. I'm actually going into my fourth year at UNLV, which has been so weird to say, because I've just like, I'm not used to saying that yet. Um, but yeah, a little bit about like my involvement journey. Um, I kind of started off on um, my first year in, of UNLV, like not super involved. And then I kind of like dove right in my second year and I got involved in the residence hall association. So that's within housing. And then from there I jumped to being an orientation leader and a rebel recruiter. And then I got involved in our CSUN student government and a few other things here and there. Um, but yeah, it's been super fun. I am like local to Las Vegas. So I've been living here for like 12 years, but I do live on campus. So I always like to say I can kind of like help between the commuter experience and the living on campus experience. So any questions about that, I can help you out. Boom, awesome, thank you. And my name is Corbin, I use he, him pronouns. This is, um, I'm a transfer student, so I just finished my first year at UNLV, but it was also like my sophomore year or my junior year-ish. So it was like freshman, junior, now I'm a sophomore, senior, I don't know. Um, I am the social media content creator with student involvement and activities. That's kind of my main way that I'm involved. I also, um, which we'll kind of talk about later, I also um, was, you know, we attend a bunch of events. I'm always seeing Isabella at events. Um, and I also had like an internship last year. So, you know, definitely had kind of a unique involvement experience, which I'm super excited to talk about today. So um, to start off, you said you just said that you weren't super involved your first year. Um, overall, what do you think are the benefits of getting involved? Like when you first start off at UNLV? Yes. Oh my God. There's so many. <laughs> I have a whole like 10 minute spiel about getting involved um, whenever I'm doing tours on campus. <laughs> And so, gosh, I would say the first biggest thing is just the connections that you make. Um, when you're not involved, college can feel, not even just like UNLV, like college in general can feel like it's isolating, like you're all alone in this like really big scary thing. But like when you're involved and you make connections to people, all of those get so much, like all of those feelings get so much like less scary because you have people that are there to help you out, people going through it like you are. Um, and you just get to build really, really like special connections to others. Whereas if you're not involved, you don't get the same experience. Um, and not even connections to fellow students, you get connected to campus resources and departments, and you really just get to learn how to like leverage what you're already paying for um, to make your college experience better. A lot of people kind of forget that you have, if you're enrolled in four more credits, you have all of the SRWC available to you, the entire thing. Like the only thing you might wanna pay for if you're interested in is lockers, but like, not a lot of people like use them if you don't need them you don't like you're not gonna have to pay for them um so yeah like biggest things I feel like are relationships to both students and the campus departments and resources that you're already like paying for they're already available for you um and just you know like fun times you know like college is hard sometimes if you're having like those really tough classes and you need a break getting involved really just gives you that fun experience and that's what college is all about all about <laughs> sure, for sure um i definitely i definitely what you said is like perfect i i had that exact like those two factors definitely like applied to my experience um through this uh job i've been able to meet like so I never would have met like you for example I'm sure we would have met eventually so we're always seeing each other at events but like I made a lot of friends um through events through you know uh, my coworkers, stuff like that and also again um the campus departments that is a huge one the campus resources because again you know they're like oh it's free no it's included you already have paid for it so I definitely think it's super important to you know find these resources and be able to use them um, for example, through this uh, position, I was able to discover the UNLV Museum, which is also free, uh, free for entry. And every couple of months, they completely change all of their ex exhibitions. So it's always cool to see them. And also a really big one, which I know we're both passionate about, is the food pantry, which, again, is free. And any UNLV students or staff can go and get a bunch of free groceries and free personal care resources, which, again, if I wasn't involved, I don't know if I necessarily would have even discovered that. 
Um, so you kind of have, we kind of talked about finding your community a little bit, um, kind of segueing to kind of the more academic or professional benefits. Um, what do you think are, like, how has, for example, your um, in-class experience been heightened by um, getting involved? Or how do you think, um, how do you think it's benefited you in the academic slash professional realm? Yes, absolutely. One example that I always think about is, it's kind of crazy because there's like, there's this person, um, he was actually involved in CSUN and we went to the same high school, like we're both fine arts majors, but I didn't meet him because we went to the same high school or we're both fine arts majors. I met him because of the involvement that we were in and he's a piano major and he was like why don't I just like play for your junior recital like if I had not met him like we like if I had met him because of the involvement that we were in like he would have just been some person I went to high school with you know and people aren't just some people you go went to high school with like people are passionate about piano like they are passionate about helping others get into college like there's so much more to people and I feel like when you get involved, um, you can really build connections even within your own department. Um, like, for example, like there are also people in like some of my music history classes. And if there's any music majors in here, music history is a really challenging class. And so it was just so nice to be able to turn to those people and like spend three hours in the library, like studying our faces off. And so it's just if like, if anything, the least that you should do as far as invol involvement goes is, like, connect to people in your classrooms. Like, that's the bare minimum, because if even, like, you're at least gonna get help, like, on your assignments and, like, build your skills within your own professional kind of, like, field or study. Um, but, like, again, it's so much better to go and experience more um, especially if you have the opportunity to like really take advantage of it um, just because again like you're going to build so many connections and you're going to grow your skills in that field. Definitely and kind of like what you're saying like you really get like connections and kind of like hands-on experience that you just don't ne necessarily get in the classroom and also you know we're both fine arts majors you know I'm a film major I know you're an opera major and so that's you know, it's not like guaranteed we graduate, we're going to go be accountants, or I'm sure it's hard to get an accounting job. But like, there's no like really concrete, like, um, there's not a lot of concrete career choices when it comes to being a fine arts major, being an artist. So finding connections, whether it be like you said, in the classroom, or if you join organizations that do apply to your major, um, that's a great way to either build your resume or your reel, or um, a lot of times it does lead to connections, which do lead to careers. And also, um, if again, if anybody has any questions about getting um, involved during your first year, definitely drop them in the comments or the little question thingy. Um, so moving on to some of the misconceptions or kind of concerns about getting involved. I know one of the big ones, one of the ones I've heard the most is, um, not having enough time to get involved. I know, especially for UNLV, uh, a lot of people are working at the same time, having to pay for their own, um, tuition and these type of things. Um, what do you think, what are you, or what are your thoughts on, um, kind of the hesitation because of the time commitment? Absolutely. So first off, like, that's a very, very valid concern. Um, like I said before, like, I don't sugarcoat it. College is hard, um, especially if you are like moving thousands of miles away from your family and say you're living on campus and you've never really been to Las Vegas. Like, that's especially hard. Um, and if you're working other jobs, like, totally understandable. Um, I would say take everything like at your own pace. Um, like, don't ever feel like you you have to like one of the things that we always talk about in new student orientation is um like choose your own adventure and it's really true like you don't have to go do something because everyone else is doing it or like your friends doing it so like you sh you have to do like you have to go do that um no like you are your own individual person um but again like take it at your own pace there's also so many like low stakes positions like there are there are so many um clubs and uh they're, they're called rso's they're registered student organizations um and there's so many of them that are just like general member you know you don't have to go jump in and be secretary of a certain club you can literally just sit in at the weekly meetings like go to an event here or there um, and if that's like all you can handle for now, then that's fine. Like you will definitely at least get some sort of 
building connections, make, like having fun, making memories, like all of that will come there. Um, I will just say like, yeah, like take everything at your own pace and just remember like you can always build up, you know, you can always start at an entry level and then keep going if, if it's the right fit for you. Totally, totally. And kind of relating back to what we were talking about earlier with um, kind of being able to meet people and stuff. I think it's a lot easier if, you know, let's say you go to anime club, like you already know everyone in the room has something in common with you. You know, you can ask what's your favorite show, what's your favorite movie, rather than like, you know, when you have nothing necessarily are automatically in common with people, you, you have that connection point through RSOs. And I know like a lot of people, again, like, you know, there's, oh, you know, I can't commit to every week. A lot of, we have almost 400 orgs across campus. So there are a ton of different options. Some meet like once a month, some meet online, you know, it doesn't have to be, um, like you're saying, it could be a choose your own adventure. It doesn't have to be like every week you're in there taking notes of the whole meeting, you know, you're running the meeting, it doesn't have to be that, unless you want it to be. Mm -hmm. um so what do you think i know you you know in your introduction you shared like a hundred rso's um, <laughs> what do you think are the benefits um of being in an rso and super quick uh, i know one of the questions we got on our ig story was um asking for entry if certain clubs are kind of selective if um, there are certain requirements to enter certain clubs and it it does depend um, on a case by case but for the most part, uh, most orgs are pretty open. Um, you can, yeah. even for most of them, you don't have to like start the first week, you know, you can join like halfway through the semester. Um, I know some might have like GPA requirements or different things like that, but for a majority of them are not selective at all. Like if you're interested, you can just go and it's super chill. Um, but yeah, what do you think are some of the benefits of being in an RSO or um, I know we both also have on-campus jobs. What do you think are the benefits of that? Yeah. Yes. Oh my gosh. Another part of my spiel. <laughs> so, um, gosh, a couple benefits. So first things, um, that comes to mind is a lot of people have concerns about the cost of college. Um, very valid concern. It's very expensive, especially if you're coming out of state. Um, however, I will say working at the place you go to college is a very beneficial thing. One, because if you say you have a performance, you're a fine arts major, say you have to go write an essay or you're studying for an exam, um, your advisor is going to put that first because you're working on campus. Like that is priority number one. Um, second, there's a lot of like really, really special benefits that come with certain jobs. So for example, I said I kind of started off in the residence hall association. Um, I started off as sustainability coordinator. It was something that like, I, I was passionate, I still am passionate about sustainability. And it was like, just like a low stakes kind of executive board position. And I ended up like really loving it. And so I kind of worked my way up. And now I'm serving as the president of the residence hall association. And my benefits from being president literally cover like my room and board and I have an hourly pay on top of it. Like, it's insane. And it's tax exempt because it's housing. <laughs> like, insane and you can do the same thing if you're a resident assistant your room and board is covered and you get like a stipend every month um some things to consider if you're if you're wanting to work on campus we do have hourly pay and stipend based pay so you can really work the system to like stack jobs and like i see corporate smile because like it is like such a good gig y'all like i'm not even kidding you so when i worked in the um in CISA and student government i was their associate director for physical marketing that position is stipend based it's not hourly based and if you know UNLV has like a 20 hour limit for every week um that's just because we want to make sure especially if you're a full-time student like 20 hours is plenty. <laughs> um, that's like a lot <laughs> already. But like, say you have one hourly job that's getting 20 hours a week, you can stack your stipend based job on top of it. So you're essentially only working 20, 20 hours a week, but you have two sources of income. Like, this is such a like, it is like a cheat code. <laughs> like, It's so it's so beneficial. Um, and obviously, like, that's just kind of for like student worker positions. But as far as benefits that are just for like RSOs or your, your clubs and organizations, um, that's leadership experience. That's like 
a resume building experience. Um, a ton of like a ton of employers after college are looking for that leadership experience. Like, are you good at communicating with people? Do you know how to like, are you reliable? Do you know how to get projects done? Um, and all of those, like you can prove because you were on an RSO or anything like that. So I know I'm like blabbering, but so many benefits. I always recommend it. Um, check out the Involvement Center for like any, like if you want to search for clubs, or organizations, that's always a good, a good place to go. Oh, and y'all need to listen to Isabel. She is giving all the cheat, like the cheat codes, the tea. She has it. Um, for me, um, my on-campus position, a little bit like you talked about earlier with the, I know a lot of people at UNLV are, it's a community college. Uh, for me, it's also really beneficial to um, have multiple things, like go to UNLV one day and I have multiple things that I'm doing. Like I'm working a shift and I'm going to class and maybe going to an event rather than like drive 30 minutes to UNLV, go to an hour class and then drive 30 minutes home. It makes it, I feel like a lot more like satisfied, I guess, or like my time is being used a lot better when there's multiple reasons for me to go all the way up to campus. Yeah. So for any other commuter students, that's definitely, definitely a great option. And then um, I actually, I haven't joined any RSOs yet. I know it's very, um, you know, it's very tongue in cheek of me, but last um, summer and through the fall, I did an internship with, uh, technically is an RSO with the on-campus uh, radio station, 91.5. Um, and that experience, um, while it is like on one hand, like it's kind of a tactical, you know, I'm able to say I had an internship. I'm able to, you know, put that on my resume. It was also just so fun. Like I've always wanted to be on the radio. I've always wanted to do that type of thing. And, you know, I was able to check that off the bucket list. You know, I was able to, my grandma was texting me like how much, how excited she was to hear me, you know, just stuff like that. And again, that's something that you can't experience if, you know, you just kind of go to class and then go home. Um, so moving on, so kind of switching over to events. Um, so there's kind of, different types of events a little bit um but you know there's value in attending them all so um i know you work uh like a lot of the orientations and stuff so what do you think are is the value of going to the events that happened before the semester yes okay so first like orientation and you know creates are like huge like long days that you get so much information I really think like all of that is very very crucial to your experience at UNLV um and also it's a requirement like if you don't go to, if you don't go to orientation like you'll have a hold on your account so you have to go um and also like You'll get your schedule at the end of the day. You get to meet people within your college. Um, just this past weekend, we had to we had back to back new student orientations. So one on Friday, one on Saturday, and like both days, we had so many students like leaving, switching phone numbers or like Instagram handles and stuff. And it's just like it's so it's so awesome to see people connecting because like again, like this might be someone's first time coming to Las Vegas. Like it might be their first time you know, not being like living at home or wherever, like with their family, um, all those things. So definitely like crucial information, building those connections. Um, and then other uh, um, events. So we have like UNLV Creates, we have Premier UNLV, we have the Involvement Fair. Um, all of these are, again, both really inform um, informative and really great opportunities to build connections to people. Um, there's also just like events with RSOs like um, one time so this is like the craziest story ever so I went to um, uh, the Filipino American Student Association it's also known as FASA I went to an event of theirs back in December and it was they had like karaoke and you know me with my vocal performance I was like yes I'm about to like kill this and one of the people attending the event her her um her position is or she works at the ACLU of Nevada and she literally reached out to me and she was like hey I heard you sing like do you want to come sing for us we have an award ceremony in February like we'd love to have you sing for us and I was just like like it was so cool you know like if like the smallest thing like I think I got invited that same day. Like my friend who who is in FASA and she's in like the executive board, she was like, yeah, like come out, there'll be food and stuff. And I was like, okay. And one little invite, like one decision to go like sing and karaoke at nighttime in the student union ballrooms, like 
led to me literally connecting with like this huge organization. Um, and like, now I can say, I know this person and this person. And like, if there's any other future events, like I can like totally gig with them. And so another opportunity to build both like within um, your like network within your college, like as a fine arts student, but also like having fun. <laughs> and so, yeah, there's both like, really important kind of like UNLV wide events, especially for your first year experience. Um, and also just little events between like all of the clubs and organizations that it's always a great opportunity to go and join. Definitely, definitely. Um, so some of the more like informative events, um, like you mentioned, um, like involvement fair or Greek fest. Um, I know there we also got a question um, if there was a specific um, day for students to sign up for organizations. There isn't a day because most orgs you can sign up or register whenever throughout the semester or throughout the school year again it does kind of depend on the org but um the involvement fair which is the second wednesday of every semester and is coming up on september 7th that is going to be the best 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 way to again expand your network get to know the different organizations it's kind of the involvement center involvementcenter.unlv.edu um has all the list of organizations and their information but the involvement fair really brings that to life you're able to meet you know the actual organization members you're able to ask them questions again like relating back to what we said earlier if you know you're hesitant about your schedule or you don't re you know you're a little just nervous to get involved in general you're able to make those connections you're able to see all of the options that you have so the involvement fair again september 7th and it happens every semester um, is super great and then also greek fest which is kind of similar um, where a lot of uh, fraternity and sorority life um, they come out and they table so you're able to again make those connections kind of see you know if you're hesitant about fsl in general or you don't know which um which house um, you're interested in uh joining um then you're able to make that connection in real life rather than like looking at information on a website yeah it's so much better to just be able to like talk to somebody about it and just like get a feel like go for the vibes you know i'm sure dj prenup or someone will be there like having a fun time so just go have fun like go talk to people and then you can enter the drawing for like beats headphones or with whatever they're doing this so, year there is so many yes and we yeah. also question um somebody joined a little bit late and is asking what an rso is that is a great question an rso is a registered student organization so that's any organization on campus made of students that is registered through um the involvement center so those are our official clubs and organizations and there's also some um that are more connected to departments or um, some that are specifically connected to certain majors and things like that and then there's also which i think is really cool with the involvement center you're able to look up different keywords or category. So if you're looking for something social, if you're looking for something cultural, or maybe um, volunteer service based, or again, specifically to apply to your academics, you can even them all down on the involvement center. Um, so other ways to find kind of get involved, um, you can also definitely always come up to the student involvement and activities office, which is in the student union on floor three, I believe it's room 316. And if you ask someone at the front desk, they will get you with someone, um, one of our staff members, and we can kind of help you to, you know, find organizations or events that are right for you. So Isabel, I have a question for you. What maybe last year, maybe over your whole college experience, what has been your favorite or the most fun like in moment of involvement for you um the most fun moment um gosh i just can't get over rj taco night <laughs> that one's just the most iconic one um so essentially last year almost like a whole year ago uh unlv creates was actually hosted on the srwc lawn or some people call it the day in lawn um, but it's basically that grass between Dayton Complex and the Student Recreation and Wellness Center. And right after UNLV creates, um, Reb, our Rebel Events Board, hosted a movie night. And following the movie night, RHA, the Residence Hall Association, had our taco night, which is a very late night event. Like, I think ours this year was from, like, 10 to 1 or maybe something like that. It was like very, it's like supposed to be a really late night event. And we have like way more people show up than we anticipated. Like probably upwards of like 
we only were prepared for like 200, but we probably had like 400 people show up. And it was like so hectic, but it was so much fun. And we all were in the dining commons and we like catered some like tacos from a local like place in Las Vegas. And it was just, it was like both chaos, but both like so much fun. So that's always a a memory that I have. And we're super excited because we're doing it again this year. Um, But I know we're going to be, like, way prepared for everyone to show up because Welcome Week is just such a blast. Like, it's it's so much fun. (laughs) Definitely. Um, I think Welcome Weeks last year was super fun because, again, you know, kind of relating it back to your first year, it's a great way, like, a great foundation and a great way to get started because, again, you get to meet people. You get to at least – I think even if you're not like going up to people like, hey, what? at least like seeing people like with your eyes and then you see them again and you s- and then see them a co- and then you're like, okay, maybe this yeah. time I'll see them. I think even that's <laughs> super beneficial. Um, yeah. But for last year, homecoming week was like, <gasps> stop fun. Like it was- The parade, oh my yeah, gosh. There was a, we had a golf cart parade where so many different organizations and groups decorated um, floats. Um, we had the Rebel Variety Show where we saw a bunch of people, you know, showcase their talents. And then there was the Homecoming Festival with a bunch of rides and games. And um, for me, what was super fun was at the actual Homecoming game, again, because I am like a student staff member and I was getting some coverage. I was able to go out on the actual field. So that was pretty fun. Um, yeah. And again, all of this, you know, if I wasn't involved already, if I didn't, you know, get my toe wet uh, with this job or with the internship, I don't know if I would necessarily have the confidence to be like, yeah, let's go to the homecoming festival. So I would say even though it is pretty nerve wracking, the earlier that you can kind of, you know, at least get a toe wet, at least go to create, you know, go to one yeah. RSO meeting. Yeah. And honestly, like a really easy, easy way to um, like just get information because sometimes especially if you're just like going to class or anything, or you're just like going to class, getting food and going to class, like at least like follow all of the big like departments and RSOs on Instagram, like go and see that way. You're like, you are in the loop. Like, you know, when an event is happening, you know, when they're, um, they're looking for e-board positions, like, you know, about the application process, or if there's an election you want to run in, like, at least like follow them on social media and like that way like when you're you know like hanging at home then you know like because I'm like honestly like yeah like you get emails all of us get emails about events on campus but between all of like the emails from your professors and stuff like I get it like it can get lost in there in your inbox but um that's a really great way and just like go visit um like the library has a whole bulletin board like an entire bulletin board of events um scholarships that's another one like if you get involved um a lot of events will have like scholarship drawings or give a like i know i mentioned giveaways at the involvement fair um these are really great opportunities to make college a little bit cheaper for you so yeah definitely like check people out on social media like go up to the bulletin boards scan all the qr codes like it'll it'll help you out i promise for sure, for sure. And I, it, I'm going to completely shamelessly self plug. Again, <laughs> yeah. stuff. if you are following, you know, at involvement, you know, just for example, um, not only are you able to see like, um, the information of the events beforehand, but also um, f- if you are following these accounts, you can see kind of coverage or pictures and videos of the actual events, mm-hmm. so you can see, okay, maybe next time, you know, this time I wasn't feeling it, but you see the pictures and videos, and you're like, okay, maybe next time I'll go ahead and jump in. Um, and then also I want to plug the Involvement Center again, because that is a great, great resource. That's how I um, found this position. It's involvementcenter.unlv.edu. Um, and through there, you can search for all of our almost 400 student organizations, which include, you know, you can even them down by certain keywords if you want to search them or by category. Um, and also you can search for events that are happening on campus. And again, you can search for certain keywords or by category. I like the events category because there's one where it's like free stuff, free food, and then you only see the events that have free stuff or free food, which is always. Yeah. Um, is there anything else you would like to add, Isabel? Anything you would like to tell the people? Oh, my goodness. Um, this is the one that I always leave people off with is just like, please be brave, like take the leap. Um, like it's really, it's low stakes. Like I keep saying like, it's low stakes. If you just go to a meeting and just like sit in and like, see if you like it, um, or like go to an event and go get the free food. And then like, 
maybe you'll find someone that you really love to connect with and they're part of an RSO and you're like, oh, cool. Like, I want to join that too. Like, it's so, it's, it's honestly like, it's crazy how little, like I've done, like I've gotten to where I've gotten because of the little things that I did. Like I chose to apply to RHA and that like set me off in like my whole college experience and my whole college career. Like because I was an RHA, I had friends that were in CSUN and they encouraged me to be an intern. Like there, it's like the list just keeps going on. And so again, like just please, be brave, like go to an event, um, go like say hi to somebody. Um, that's like the least you can do. And so I promise you like that you just never know how like how much of an impact some of the littlest things can can really have on your college experience. Thank you for everyone who tuned in. If you guys have ever have any more questions about, um, you know, getting involved in general or specifically, you know, during your first year, definitely, if you see, I'll, I'll speak for Isabel. If you see either of us around, definitely stop us and ask us questions yeah. or you DM us, um, jump on the Involvement Center, involvementcenter.unlv.edu. Um, yeah, thank you guys all so much. And thank you again, Isabel. Yes, of course. Thank you, y'all.